Alright, so I thought I'd release a video on how to make a solid copper ring with nothing more than a blowtorch. No solder, no uh, welder, no nothing like that. It is a perfectly welded ring and you can then hit it with a hammer to texturize it all you want, make cool bands, you know, you can make bands for like, you know, stacker rings if you wanted to. But these are solid. Uh, the equipment that I use for this is nothing more than a blowtorch and a propane tank. I'll put a list below on all the equipment necessary. And this thing is invaluable if you're working with copper. It's like the most inexpensive torch you can buy. Um, and the most useful and the most fun to play with. So you you win all the way around with this. It's uh, my go-to torch anytime I'm using a torch. It's not a $300 one. It's like, I don't know, it's like 80 bucks, but still, it's uh, pretty invaluable. So, without further ado, how the hell did I do this? Right? Cool. Alright, number one, get some 14 gauge wire. And the cheapest you can buy is the 14 gauge wire with the the plastic coating on it. Okay, and then strip off the coating with an exacto knife. I just usually run it along it and then just go like that, keep running it along until I get a long enough piece. Next, get yourself a mandrel and then wrap it around the mandrel. Try to get it as tight as possible. Please no, do not anneal the copper at all. Keep the copper the same uh, textile strength as what it came off on the roll. So it does take a little bit of effort to bend the 14 gauge copper around it. Next, evenly pull it apart on wood side. Get yourself some nippers and then cut just like this that, then offset the cut, and cut yourself a whole bunch of these, just like that. I just made a few for this demonstration because yeah, I just produced a whole bunch of these anyway, so I don't need any more. like that. Get yourself some pliers that don't have any teeth. Okay, you can find these every once in a while. I actually found these at Harbor Freight and I sanded off the teeth. They are an amazing tool. I use them like every day. But if you can't find or don't have a sander powerful enough to sand these off, just find, you know, like just basic pliers with no teeth. Okay, so what you do is you put them in the pliers, kind of like this. And then you rotate them. And then what that did is now there is constant force on this as a spring. Okay, do that with every ring. If you remember as a kid, we used to make these paper clip jumpers. It's the same concept. You'd take a paper clip and unbend it, then set this on the table, it would jump. If you never did that, it's probably because you're not from a small town and nothing else to do in your math class. Okay. 
we go. Got three of them made. All right, now you want to find a vise or something to hold a piece of refrigeration tube. You can buy this at your local hardware store. It's hollow. Um, reason why you want something like this is because you want the heat to be very localized on your torch. All the heat goes to one area. This stuff doesn't heat up very good. Uh, when it does heat up, it cools down very fast. Okay, that's important. So you could try other things out, but um, I found this to be the best so far. If you find others, hey, put it down below. This torch is the two, let's see if I can get this to focus in on this. Yeah, there we go. 253-1611 by Benzomatic. It is multi-gas torch. In other words, it can be either map gas or propane. It has lasted me for ever. It is the best torch I've ever come across. Um, it's the cheapest torch they, when it comes down to it, and not really, but it, it's for the price you pay for this torch, it will pay for itself within, I don't know, probably about two or three weeks time. Very sweet torch. This thing never works, okay? So don't worry about that. You're gonna have to use this. The reason for that is because I'm running it off of a propane tank. So let me show you that rig right now. You can probably watch some of my other videos. I've shown this rig a few times. So you can see I got it hooked to a propane tank via this hose. It just screws in and then it goes into the torch. Now when I say I barely ever change the propane tank. I mean, it's been a while since I've changed the propane tank. And I heat copper all the time. I heat lots of metals all the time. Okay, so this is going to be a very fun shot. So you see that I just dangled it on this piece of refrigeration tube. I'm gonna try to make it so I can film this. Now it's gonna go into different colors. It's gonna go from red to straw yellow. And once it hits straw yellow, the joint will bind. Okay, so check this out. Let's see that with the lights on this time. And let me see if I can't focus in on that just because this is in the way and it's bright color. There we go.
You see it? How it like melded together there? Yeah. It's a little easier to see sometimes in the light or dark. Yeah, it depends who you are. Do it one more time just for entertainment sake. That one you really got to see it. Nice, so what you do now is you put those on a mandrel and you hammer them out. I want to hit this one just one more time. So let's go hit them with a mandrel or hit them with a hammer and I'll show you my texturized hammer. It's pretty sweet. Uh, this I don't tell you how to make other than you need a, a plasma torch. And if you watch some of my plasma gouging videos, um, which I think there's actually one video on plasma gouging, but I plasma gouged a hammer to make it textured, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you can use any hammer really and make any kind of band, but I find if you're going to use these for electroforming, do you want to put a ton of texture into them, and then in the end, it comes out a lot better. So you're going to need a ball hammer if you're going to make this hammer, um, and you're going to have to find somebody with a plasma torch or a plasma cutter. Other than that, I don't know how to make one of these, and you can see what I did is I plasma gouged the head of the hammer, Again, you don't have to have one of these to do this exercise, but I'm just kind of sharing that there is about a billion ways to texture a hammer with a plasma cutter. I should sell the hammers, to be honest with you, but I guess, yeah, why don't I do that? Weird. Okay, so you put it on a mandrel. And please don't message me about selling hammers yet. That was just a random idea that I had. So, check this out. And you just bonk it away. Then you get this. Which doesn't look like much, but when you electroform over the top of texture, you get even more texture. There we go. Solid copper. Indestructible. Now, of course, if you wanted to eliminate this a little bit more, you could always, you know, like sand those off or file it down in that area to blend it a little bit, or you don't have to texturize it or whatever. So, I hope you enjoyed. And just before I go, what I wanted to do is go back and see if it worked on 24 gauge copper. And here is a beautiful weld using that torch on 24 gauge twisted wire copper. Uh, did a couple of them, but 
just to make sure that it worked out. Beautiful. So, works on 24 gauge all the way up using the same method. I would say that's good science. All right, now you can enjoy it.